The Lake Orion community came together on Memorial Day to honor those who have fought and died for our country. Events included a 5K run, multiple ceremonies, and the return of the Memorial Day Parade. The Tour de Trail invited walkers, runners, and bicyclists to come out to an expo that celebrates the gem that is the Pink Creek Trail. The parking lot of the Orion Center offered a wide variety of tasty food during the Orion Area Chamber's second annual food truck rally. And a special ceremony was held at Evergreen Cemetery that honored a former teacher whose name adorns Lake Orion's oldest elementary school. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. While many spend the long Memorial Day weekend barbecuing, swimming, and boating, the Lake Orion community never fails to honor those who lost their lives defending the freedoms we enjoy today. Several events were scheduled on Memorial Day, including a 5K run, a parade, and multiple ceremonies. On the morning of May 30th, more than 300 runners and walkers gathered near Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion for the start of the 6th annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K and five mile run. At 9 a.m., those taking part in the five mile run lined up at the start and followed a course that took them onto Pink Creek Trail and across the Van Tassel Pedestrian Bridge. And just a few minutes later, 5K participants lined up to begin the next phase of the event. our sixth year and we really started this as a fundraiser uh, for the Orion Veterans Memorial, uh, Jenny and I, uh, but it's kind of grown into more than that. It's kind of a celebration of America. Uh, so we've just been encouraging people before they do their barbecues and they grill out and they do their boating, which is all part of what we should be doing today, take a little bit of time in the morning to uh, recognize why we're able to do all those things. And so it does bring us a lot of, a lot of uh, joy to see the numbers, record numbers for sure this year. Uh, and with walk-ups, we'll definitely beat our biggest total so far, over 300 runners and walkers and families. And it's kind of become an annual event. And I've heard from a lot of people this week that said they look forward to this day with their family, kind of kicks things off the right way. So um, Jenny, Jenny though, Jenny Body gets, gets all the credit because she works really hard for months to pull this off. All the registration fees benefit the long-term sustainability of the memorial, which is one of the best memorials, in my opinion, around. And this is the only fundraiser that the memorial does all year, so all these funds raised goes to maintaining that. Crossing the finish line first was Eric Berg of Shelby Township, who ran the five-mile course in 29 minutes, 18.4 seconds. Is there anything special about coming out on this race on Memorial Day? Yeah, yeah, just kind of celebrating our, our troops and, and uh, the sacrifice that they made out there. It's just a really great way to um, just celebrate community and, and celebrate their lives and, and the sacrifice that they've given for us. So, Finishing first in the 5K race was Matthew Antonio of Lake Orion with a time of 21.49.5. The first female to finish the 5K was his wife Paula, who crossed the finish line at 23.37.5. Well, we like supporting the community. Paula was looking for a, a local race to do, so Paula signed up about... Uh, a couple days ago, really. <laughs> yeah, a couple days ago. And uh, uh, actually, I just came down to support her. I've been doing a little run earlier today and jogged down to see her run and thought I'd jump in and, and do the race last minute, so I just signed up. He literally <laughs> signed up. Surprise. Yeah, 10 minutes before the race starts, and then he wins it. Describe the course, conditions, uh, atmosphere today. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. We love the downtown area, the downtown park, and we're local runners to the, the Pink Creek Trail, so, oh, we love it. And it was great condition today, actually, especially with the trees, everybody's, everything's in bloom, and it smells so great. So, yeah, it was, it was a great course. I love it. Everyone who participated in the event received a dog tag at the finish line. Immediately following the race, representatives of the American Legion, post-233, gathered in Children's Park for a ceremony and rifle salute. Ladies Auxiliary President Sandy Boyd tossed a wreath into the waters of Pink Creek to honor those who lost their lives at sea. The ceremony followed an earlier ceremony that took place in East Lawn Cemetery on Orion Road, where many veterans are buried.
for those folks who gave their life, uh, we can't do enough. And my father happened to be a POW of the, <laughs> at the Battle of the Bulge. Luckily, he got out. And when he got home, he was six foot four. He weighed 91 pounds. And I think of him and I think of all the folks who have given their lives. So we have this glorious day and been able to have a country that we live in. And this is why we do this. At 11 a.m., the streets of downtown Orion were closed to traffic as spectators lined up along Flint and Broadway for the Memorial Day Parade. It was the first time the parade passed through the village since 2019. Leading the way was the police department's 1941 Ford police car, which was carrying 2022's honored veteran, who was introduced to the crowd by Police Chief Harold Rossman. United States Marine Corps gunnery sergeant Todd DeKinderen is a Lake Orion High School graduate of the class of 2003. After serving overseas in Japan and the Philippines, he made the All-Marine boxing team in 2006. He spent the bulk of his time with the Marines as a recruiter before getting honorably discharged in May of 2019. Community groups and military vehicles left Blanche Sims Elementary School to make their way down Flint Street before turning right on Broadway toward the Eamon Center. Bringing up the rear was the Lake Orion High School marching band. p.m. Veterans and members of the community gathered at the Orion Veterans Memorial on M24 for the final event of the day. Board Chairman and U.S. Army Veteran Dr. Joseph Mastro Mateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced Professor John Todd of Rochester College. A Vietnam veteran, Professor Todd was wounded in action, costing him his eyesight. In World War I, we lost 117,000 killed in action. In World War II, we lost 292,000. In the Korean War, 50,000 Americans died or were brutally killed in concentration camp. In Vietnam, the war where I served, 58,000 men were killed in action and their names are on the wall. And in the war on terror, the last 20 or 30 years, with the volunteer military, we've lost over 7,000. Now, I'm sure you've been adding all those numbers up in your head, and they total to just over half a million. And so, those half a million, yes, they need to be, and it is just and fair that we honor them. In honor of all of our military branches of service, the honor, Navy, Coast Guard, Merchant Marines, and Air Force. The Memorial Day ceremony continued as veterans read the names of Lake Orion residents who died serving their country. Lee F. Carpenter, Clayton Albert Decker, Robert Leland Decker, Edwin R. Dewey, Roger H. Bevelcorn, Bernard A. Kowalk. Erwin A. Cruz, Martin F. Lamphere, Julian E. Moore, Charles J. Petit. The ceremony concluded with a gun salute and the playing of taps. Walkers, runners, and bicyclists were encouraged to celebrate National Trails Day on June 4th. Here in Lake Orion, an event was held to show off the gem known as Pink Creek Trail. 
On Saturday, June 4th, the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail hosted the Tour de Trail in the parking lot near Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Numerous vendors took part in an expo that offered products and information to walkers, runners, and bikers, and visitors enjoyed food and refreshments. The expo was free to the public, but t-shirt sales and an organized bike ride acted as a fundraiser for the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. The Friends of the Pink Creek Trail function as an ancillary group to the Pink Creek Trail Commission, Trailways Commission, and Trail Management. We do ancillary things like uh, uh, pay for bike racks. The bike racks, for example, you see over by Oat Soda and uh, Cookies and Cream. Those were in part sponsored by the Friends of the Pink Creek Trail. We have done water fountains. We have donated to support Lids for Kids, which is also an expo where they give away uh, free helmets to kids and give them professional fitting. So we do those kinds of things where the Trailways Commission and Trail Management and the, the municipalities along the trail, they do the maintenance, they do the, the work that has to be done every day. We do special projects. Paint Creek Trail runs from Lake Orion to Rochester Municipal Park following the former Detroit and Bay City Railroad that began offering service in 1872. Penn Central sold a segment of railroad to a trail commission in 1983, who then surfaced the eight-foot-wide trail with crushed limestone in the early 1990s. I've done a lot of trails, both in the United States and in Europe, and this is one of the best. It is, we have over 100,000 people that use it every year, and everyone loves it. The Friends of the Pink Creek Trail meets quarterly at the Pink Creek Cider Mill. Their next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, August 11th at 6.30 p.m. For more information, you can call 248-651-9260 or visit pinkcreektrailfriends.org. With summer in full swing, you can hardly drive down any street without stumbling onto a garage sale. Recently, Orion Township offered bargain hunters a chance to visit the Orion Center for some one-stop shopping. On a sunny Saturday, June 4th, more than 30 vendors set up in the parking lot of the Orion Center for Orion Township's community garage sale. The event was free to visitors looking for a deal on clothing, home decor, furniture, and more. And Shred It was on the grounds to shred and recycle sensitive documents. It's really just a community event for everyone to come out and enjoy and have fun and be outdoors. It's a beautiful day. Does it really get any better than this in Michigan in early June? It doesn't. Sky's blue, not a cloud around. It's gorgeous. It's a great day to be outside with your family. One local nonprofit organization saw the opportunity to host a fundraiser by occupying a space to sell handbags and purses. This is the first time I have acquired Originally it started out as 400 handbags, they are donated handbags and many of them are designer, brand new and so um, we found that this was the best way to sell them and we are basically just doing it for donations. We're asking a minimum of five dollars each but donations and many people have been extremely generous so we appreciate that. While that was going on outside, a number of vendors were set up indoors for the Toy and Comic Expo. Those who ventured inside were able to browse through comics, sports cards, action figures, and a whole lot more. The event has become so popular it was announced that a second event will be scheduled later this summer. This is the big kahuna, so to speak. Um, we've done it on the first Saturday in June for many, many years. It's so popular that, in fact, I'm repeating it the end of August. So the last Saturday in August, we're going to do this again and have another outdoor garage sale. This wow. first time in history that we've done a second one outdoors. But like I said, you know, our weather is usually still pretty good in August. So we're going to give it a shot, see what happens. Might be a bad decision, might be a really <laughs> good decision. Time will tell. If you'd like to get involved with the next community garage sale, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com for more information. As the clock winds down on Lake Orion's oldest elementary school, an intimate ceremony took place at a local cemetery to honor the woman who the school is named after. ONTV's Joe Johnson has the story. On a rainy Sunday, June 5th, a group of about 100 people gathered at Evergreen Cemetery in Lake Orion to honor a very special Lake Orion citizen. Blanche Sims taught in Orion schools for 50 years and was a member of Orion High School's class of 1895. 
Blind Sims Elementary School was named in her honor when it opened its doors in 1950. Blanche was a founding member of the John Crawford chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which celebrates its 105th year of existence. But it was recently discovered that her gravestone didn't bear the insignia of the organization, and its members decided it was time to rectify that oversight. We are here to honor Blanche Sims, one of our founding members. She was one of 20 women who were ahead of their time and saw a need uh, to do volunteerism in their community and in the state. And they followed the guidelines of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. I think her commitment to education to me is is really outstanding to you know to receive 10 years never absence or tardy doesn't that just like who does that but she does that um, and you know the fact that she was known as you know the most famous woman in Lake Orion and after I learned more about her she, she certainly is. Among those in attendance was Blanche Sims Elementary School principal Ken Noose, as well as a group of students who performed during the ceremony. He told us he makes sure the students at the school are aware of the contributions Blanche Sims made to education in Lake Orion. As a matter of fact, he brought along the bell she used in her classroom. Uh, that bell has been hanging in uh, Blanche Sims and it was bequeathed to Blanche Sims Elementary, former former teacher, uh, uh, and it was the bell that Blanche Sim used when she was here uh, as a teacher on her desk. And so it's been hanging proudly right next to her plaque with an explanation of the bell and the history of Blanche Sims and everything she did for us, uh, teaching at Blanche Sims for, uh, well, it wasn't Blanche Sims, teaching in Lake Orion for 50 years. Also in attendance was Artis Pierce, who was in the school's very first kindergarten class in 1950. I do remember her picture in the hallway and, and knowing about her being um, a, a, a prominent person here in Lake Orion. Construction is currently underway on a brand new Blanche Sims Elementary School, which students will move into for the 23-24 school year. The existing building will then be demolished. In Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. Since 2018, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce has called the Orion Center its home. The ground surrounding the building has allowed the chamber to host some fun events. On the evening of Friday, June 3rd, the Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual food truck rally in the parking lot of the Orion Center. 13 food vendors offered a wide variety of choices while 17 local businesses set up tents on the grounds. Visitors enjoyed a craft beer garden hosted by Homegrown Beer Company, as well as music, a bounce house, and lots of family-friendly fun. Now in its second year, the event is bigger and better than ever. We widened our footprint um, so that we can accommodate more vendors. Um, we have brought in a bounce house and uh, photo booths for kids and for the, so there's more kids activities here. When we went to our food vendors, we tried not to replicate any of the food that we had here. So we do have two taco trucks, but they offer completely different offerings. We have two ice cream vendors, but one has vegan options and one has completely dairy options. So we were really looking to have a nice variety so that there's something for everyone's palate, including vegetarians and vegans. The event wouldn't have been possible without the support of local businesses, including Genesis Credit Union, who was the main presenter. Well, we're, we're all about being uh, committed to the community in, in, in this area, so uh, we wanted to be a part of it. It's a beautiful day, a lot of great food trucks, a lot of new uh, members that we could potentially meet, and members that are already part of the community, we'd like to just ce celebrate with them today. Parking and admission was free to visitors, but sponsorships and vendors' fees acted as fundraisers for the Chamber. Visit OrionAreaChamber.com for information about membership and upcoming events. When the Chamber isn't hosting food truck festivals and other fun events, they keep busy doing what they do best, welcoming new businesses in the community. On Thursday, May 26, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, as well as friends and family, gathered at the Orion Center Plaza on M24 to celebrate the official grand opening of Pushna Wellness with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> feeling to have all this support and love from the community and my family and friends. 
and my awesome team who's like helped in so many different ways. So. Owner Jessica Dews first opened Push to Wellness on the grounds of Canterbury Village back in the summer of 2019. Then, of course, the pandemic arrived in 2020 and disrupted everything. Jessica found a new location and began offering yoga classes in April of 2021, then expanded into the space next door in March of 2022. We started with just yoga and massage, and then we did uh, additional classes and different things, paddleboard and all that throughout the pandemic. And then the space next door has been open. So I've always loved and had a passion for spin and boxing and being just all around active. Yoga is my, my calm to my storm, I guess. <laughs> and so uh, expanding next door is just, it's, it's a holistic wellness center that I just didn't ever anticipate coming to life, but the dream came true and here I am and I'm so grateful. Using her connections at the Chamber of Commerce, Jessica reached out to her fellow business owners to make the grand opening special. I, I truly believe in networking. That's how I've grown my career, my life since I was in my early 20s. Networking is like the be all end all, I believe. And that's how I've even grown is the, the Chamber. So um, yeah, I got Lava Mountains. I have tea from them. I have tea and some treats from Lake Ray Nutrition. Homegrown Brewery provided some food. Um, uh, Orion and Ox Water Company provided water and some treats, and Sprout and Bake brought in some gluten-free uh, cookies, so yeah. For more information about classes, you can visit pushnowellness.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. With the danger of frost, a thing of the past, now is the time to plant those flowers and veggies. There's a brand new Lake Orion business that can help you produce your best garden yet. On Thursday, June 2nd, the Chamber of Commerce was out and about in the community once again, this time to celebrate the grand opening of Hydro House on the Pier Road. Vendors were lined up for a sidewalk sale as the crowd gathered to cut the ribbon. Oh, it's amazing here. This is exactly what, uh, what we expected with the community. The community here is just awesome. Everyone's been supporting us since day one which uh, we can't be more thankful for. Hydro House opened the doors on this 5,000 square foot facility on February 1st. They're a garden supply store that offers everything you need to produce a healthy garden, big or small, whether you're planting indoors or outdoors. We cater to everybody, whether you're going one tomato plant to, uh, to a whole acre, acre of tomato plants, we do it all. Foot traffic has been amazing. Uh, we've been seeing uh, increased foot traffic by the week, honestly. A lot of people are figuring out we're here now. We're uh, right here on 622 South Lapeer Road next to Opas. For more information, you can call 248-755-4011. You can find Hydro House Lake Orion on Facebook as well. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.